In the previous demo, we built a workflow with SharePoint Designer that rejected or approved new products based on their selling price. In this demo, however, we'll create a workflow with Visual Studio. So I can choose from a Visual Studio stroke SharePoint 2010 template, and I'll choose sequential workflow, and we'll call it approve reject products. We'll choose to use the intranet site for debugging. Instead of creating a list workflow, I'm going to create a site workflow this time. So this is a workflow that is not associated with lists or libraries in a SharePoint site. This is one of the brand new types of workflows supported by SharePoint 2010. So when I've clicked finished and been through the wizard, we have our workflow designer. Now I can drag and drop activities from the toolbox. And in this case, I'm going to include a code activity a sequential workflow code activity. When I double click it, I'm taken to an event handler for executing code. So I can start working with SharePoint objects, just as we've done in previous demos from web parts and so forth. Well, what I'm going to do is, in, is declare and instantiate an SP web object called this web. And for good practice, I'm going to wrap that in a using block so that we don't have to explicitly dispose. Remember that every time you use a SP web or a SP site object, you should either use a using block like this or explicitly call a dispose method. But in this case, I'm going to use a using block. Now, within my using block, I'm going to obtain a reference to that products list. So I can do that very straightforwardly with an SP list object variable called products and I'll set it equal to this web dot lists and then the string products which is the name or title of the list. What I can then do is iterate through each item in the list. So this is why I built this as a a site workflow rather than a list workflow because I want to run this at will to validate that existing products as well as new products have an appropriate price property. So we can iterate through the the items collection or the SP list item collection of the products list and start working with the data. So we'll do something very simple to start with in this demo and we'll compare the selling price of each product with a hard coded value just for, for this demo. So we can say if the selling price to string and we'll pass that as a double because we're going to compare it to a numeric value. We'll say if that is greater than three thousand dollars for this for this demo, or four thousand dollars. It is currently set at three thousand dollars by the SharePoint workflow, SharePoint Designer workflow. So let's say four thousand dollars. Well, we can start working with the moderation information. So this is the the idea or the concept of whether this item is approved or pending, or rejected and denied. So we'll put a comment in of price too high if the selling price is greater than $4,000. And we'll set the status to denied, which is part of the SP moderation status type enumeration. We then must update the product item. So every time we make an update to its field values or its moderation information status, as we've done here, we should update it to, to commit the values back to the SharePoint content database. Now we can take a, a very similar block of code to say, well, what should we do if the selling price is not greater than our hard coded value of 4,000? Well, we'll say price is OK in this case, and we'll set the moderation status type to approved. So we'll be approving these products that are in our, in our price range. So let's um, build and deploy this workflow. So very straightforward. It's a, a fairly simple workflow, obviously, but we'll, we'll come back and make it more complex in future demos by adding initiation forms and so forth. But this will get us started at least. So notice we have these two bike products. One's approved and one is rejected. The rejected item had a value of 3,500, which previously too high, but now our hard-coded value of 4,000 should allow that. So we can create a new site workflow in the intranet.contosa.com site, and we'll base it on the, the template that we've just deployed. So we've deployed approve reject products, and we're creating a workflow on that template now called approve reject. 
So we can do this very straightforwardly with the, the browser interface. So when I click OK, there's our workflow called Approve Reject. So let's go and find it as a normal user would in the Site Workflow section of the Site Actions menu. And our workflow has run. We've started the workflow. Now look, our product Sport Bike 2010, which was previously rejected, has now been approved, as have all of the products because their value is less than $4,000 in this case. So there we have our um, details of our workflow. And there's our uh, details that we set up when we created the workflow. So we had a name, we had a task list and a workflow history list. We can view the completed workflows in the My Completed Workflow section and we can see if there were any tasks assigned. There weren't in our case, we didn't do anything like that. But there we are, we've started creating a workflow with Visual Studio and in future demos we'll come and make this a little bit more dynamic by allowing the user to specify in an initiation form uh, what the maximum selling price should be.